Hey Kim, you're the creative force behind the super popular Instagram account and blog Ship Lap and Shells. Tell us about that. My account is about living in a 1920 beach house in the Gay Harbor area. And my home and garden are more of a cottage style. Uh, I love mixing vintage with new. I'm not afraid to use color at all. Tell us about the house. How old is it? It just turned 100 years old this year. My husband and I have been working on it since the day we moved in uh, and we haven't stopped. It'll be eight years in August. It's only about 1,600 square feet. Talk about Insta famous. You skyrocketed to 30,000 followers in about a year. How did that happen? I really think people fall in love with the charm and the character of an old home. Uh, there's just so much to see. And between that and living where I do, I mean, really, the Puget Sound just being in my front yard. So you get a lot of reader comments. What are most of the comments about these days? I can honestly say, I would say probably 70% of all my comments are about the greenhouse. Describe the greenhouse for us a little bit. It's a greenhouse that it's it's small, but it's so adorable. I mean, what can I say? It's it's just enough to plant all your flowers. We didn't want to uh, have to go through that permit process, so it's only an eight by 10. So again, it's very tiny, but we really tried to add some charm with it as well. And I get a lot of comments about the, the garden. I think there's a lot of people that want to learn more about gardening. I was really surprised and I'm not a master gardener by any means. Um, I kind of just fell into it when I moved here and I've just, uh, I'm just learning as I go as well. Speaking of some of the big projects you guys have done, tell me about the kitchen before and the kitchen after. The kitchen before was for Vica at Lin Linoleum Floors, some really old tile. <laughs> It was just really grungy. It was probably from the 70s. We saw a farmhouse sink that we fell in love with. And we actually started the whole process with that farmhouse sink and built the kitchen around it. So that was really, really fun. But we added subway tile and um, the tongue and groove ceiling. We added uh, a butcher block top to the dresser and made an island. We have this little tiny dresser in the middle of the kitchen, but it works for us. We also added window seats to the kitchen because we, we didn't have any, we had very little eating space. So how does that kitchen make you feel now when you uh, are sitting in there for your morning coffee? Oh, it's gorgeous. So I'm looking at the greenhouse and the water every morning. How big is your bedroom? And what is the creative and kind of cute way that you managed to incorporate, you know, the history of the house into it? Let me just say this. Um, my bedroom is so small that my king size bed is about the only thing that I can fit in there. I can't put very much furniture in there at all. Um, so we have taken um, a cabinet that was actually built the same time as the house was, and we built it into the wall when we were doing other renovations. We also have another built in on the other side. And just to you know, be really creative, we decided to do a faux mantle also on the foot of the, the other side of the bed. Do you have a tip for us at home that we can kind of use to incorporate some of that shiplap and shells charm to our own homes? There are a couple things that I like to do when summer comes. Uh, the first thing is bringing the garden inside the house. And then the other thing would be bring some color in, whether it's uh, adding some pillows or a rug, just bringing in pops of color just to, just to give it that summer feel. Well, Kim, thanks so much for sharing your beautiful world with us. And uh, I can't wait to move into the greenhouse. So I, I'll be there this weekend, okay? Okay, great. And I'll have a drink ready for you. <laughs>